This is not a board on which Bitwiz is going to be doing a ton of check raising, but he did check raise this time. All right, blind versus blind. 3x open raise is very boring, very standard, but very good. It's the same open raise sizing I use at about 100 big blinds deep. And Bitwiz calls, which is going to be his main play. 6-5 deuce is a very good board for especially bit too easy. He's going to have sixes and fives and three, four suited. And has like six deuce and five deuce. He's going to have open enders and flush draws and gut shots. He's going to have a lot of pairs as well. So pretty good board for him. Not a board on which Dud just wants to go crazy C betting. So makes total sense that he checks. I don't know if Dud checks his whole range on a board like this or if he just checks most of the time. And so Dud, Dud, Dud does now check raise, saying, hey, I've checked the strong range here. I don't want my opponent to just stab thinly and take it down with a pair. I'm going to be attacking him, which is a cool play. You definitely have to check raise here, but easy calls. Ace of clubs definitely changes things quite a bit. I mean, both guys can definitely have a flush right here. Although you'd expect Dud to have a lot of ace high flush drops when he check raises as well, which is now impossible. So I would imagine he continues with a small bet here, which he does. Nice play. And Bitwizu goes for the raise here, and he goes for quite a big raise. So at this point, he's not saying he's got two pair. Um, does he raise a set like this? Maybe, but he probably just represents a flush or nothing. So Dud calls, representing a very strong range himself. Four definitely changes things a little bit. If Bitwizu had some type of bluff with a four in it, he could maybe ha have gotten there, right? So, but it's not the most relevant card. The three clubs out there are still most relevant. Bit too easy shoves, which is going to be his main play for around 90% pot. If you've got a straight, that's probably the sizing you'd want to use. If you've got a flush, that's the sizing you want to use. If you had a hand like ace five offsuit, I don't think you want to bet at all. So it makes total sense to, that he represents a polarized range. And so his bluffs want to get as many folds as possible. And by betting bigger, you get more folds. Okay, nice hand. So what a flop for both of them, right? Dud flop stop set, cannot really blame him for a check raising, can't really blame him for betting and then calling. Even if bit easy had almost exclusively flushes on turn, you're still getting decent odds to improve. And, you know, if he's ever bluffing, you make some money as well. So, and on River, he's probably thinking that bit easy will turn a hand like, let's say, King-6 offsuit with the King of Clubs into a bluff. So against a great player like bit easy you probably would have to call. If you're playing some and knit at NL25 who never bluffs, you can find the tough fault. And Bitwizi's play seems fine. You could just slow play the turn potentially if you say, hey, this is one of my weaker flushes, but can't blame him for raising. He actually improves due to super nut straight, but it doesn't matter. So easy ship on river. And you could get snapped by a bigger flush, of course. But a flush in a spot like this, blind versus blind, is good enough to be getting it in with, even if sometimes you're crushed by 9 8 of clubs. So overall, I would say I would give both players a 9 out of 10. There's maybe some small things I would have done a little bit differently, but overall, fantastic play. 2.5x open raise by Angry Ogre. Pretty standard. I use a small open raise size, but it's absolutely fine. And so this board is much better for Dud than it is for Angry Ogre. I mean, it's the same board as before, right? Dud is just going to have slightly more nutted hands, more one pair hands and decent stuff. So Angry Ogre is saying, hey... I don't really love this board, so when I do bet, I'm going to be betting a little bit bigger. And, and Dud ends up check raising here, saying, hey, I've got three, four, I've got deuces, I've got sixes, I've got uh, fives, I've got, I don't know, six, five suited, maybe six, five off suit. I'm doing better than you are. Deuce definitely changes things quite a bit. I don't think Angry Ogre is going to be bet calling a deuce very often. I don't think Dud is going to be check raising a deuce very often. But there's a flush turn now. 6-5 got counterfeit. Pocket deuce is less likely. 5 deuce, 6 deuce less likely. So let's see what sizing Dud uses. He goes for a big bet. He's obviously not representing a whole lot of hands, right? Because even if you had a hand like pocket 8, which is a pretty strong hand on this board, it's not as if you can just comfortably bet, you know, 85% pot and just ship it in, knowing that your opponent can have all of the overpairs. 10 definitely changes things a little bit. Uh, I mean, Dud could have been Chakri's bluffing a hand like 9-8 of hearts, and now he has a straight, or sorry, a flush. 
he ends up shipping here for around pot, a little bit less than pot. So he's saying he's got at least uh, trips, you know, because if you had a hand like pocket eights, that's nowhere near a ship. Wow. Okay. Never had a chance. So angry ogre bet with the set and just call down, right? There's little reason to raise on the turn. Yes, the board is draw heavy, but when you have a full house, you don't need protection. So calling makes total sense. And the check raise and bet the turn makes sense. And on the river, you can maybe check call. You can maybe bet smaller and call a raise. So, but shipping is a is a fine strategy as well. So, just a bit of a cooler. Angry ogre, I'll give him a nine out of ten, and I'll give Dud. I'll give him a nine out of ten as well. Two point five x by Zinhao, fine sizing. And bit too easy makes it eleven big blinds to go. Definitely a good sizing. It's actually the sizing I use against two point five x, so it looks good to me. Jack three deuce is a pretty dry board. I mean, I don't think bit too easy is going to be three betting threes and deuces much, but he's going to have jacks every time. Zinhao is going to have deuces and threes. Maybe every time, maybe sometimes, I don't know. Uh, and he's going to have jacks a decent amount. So it's a pretty safe board for, uh, for bit too easy. There's not a whole lot of stuff he's afraid of. Four changes things a little bit. I mean, five, six suited gets there. Ace, five suited gets there. Fours get there. I don't think either player is three four suited, although it's definitely possible. And so a bit too easy saying, hey, I'm uh I don't love this card, I don't hate this card. Half pot seems good to me. The pot's gonna be around fifty two hundred and Zinhao would have around twenty seven hundred left. Zinhao does shove. And so if Bitu Easy has a good jack or better, in theory at least he would have to call, unless he believes that Zinhao is a is a big nit who doesn't bluff. And bit too easy, casually bank the straight here. Can't blame him for just bet betting, right? I mean, definitely betting on the flop as a bluff. And on the turn, just betting. You could also just check and try and check call, check raise, try and have Zinoha bluff. Maybe if Zinoha had a hand like King 10, right? Maybe he just follows through by bluffing twice and you can check call him. Or if you think he bet calls hand like King Jack, you could do the same. I can't really fault him for shoving here. I think it's a fine play. So Zinha, I'll give him an 8.5 out of 10. Bitwiz, I'll give him an 8.5 out of 10 as well. Nice hand. So we've got top cat open raising the 2.3x on button. Pretty, pretty standard. Bitwiz is going to call a bit wider because he's, gonna, he's getting a better price. He's got $10 off, which in the UK probably gets you a nice burrito or something or a nice, uh, a nice Neapolitan pizza. All right, ace 10 7 is a board on which you can use multiple different lines. So top cat goes for a smaller bet here, which makes a lot of sense. You could also go for big bets. I don't know if he mixes multiple bet sizes or not. This is not a board on which bit too easy is going to be doing a ton of check raising, but he did check raise this time. And he's using a bit of a larger sizing, makes sense. He's polarized. Eight changes quite a bit. Both guys can have flushes, straights, two pairs. So a bit too easy does now check. Interesting. Top cat betting pretty large here. So he's saying he's got a very good hand. He's not just betting a hand like ace king with no whole club like this. He's representing a very strong range. So he actually shoves here. Uh, is he afraid of the, the straight? Unlikely bit too easy has a straight, right? Maybe he check raises ace nine sometimes. Maybe he has a hand like, I don't know, like 10 nine of hearts sometimes. Possible, but... Unlikely the nine is really relevant. So top cat shipping here. Maybe he turns in like kings into a bluff. That would be pretty cool. And that's a damn cooler. I mean, top cat has the second nuts, right? And bit too easy has the third nut. So once bit too easy check calls here, he's representing a lot of like two pairs and sets and stuff like that. Maybe straight, maybe even one pair. So when he does, does check call a strong flush like this, it's going to be near the top of his range unless he has the, the exact nuts or second nuts. So if he believes that Top Cat is a good player who's capable of bluffing here or value betting worse, there's no way he can actually fold. Would you use two sizes on the Ace-10-7? Uh, I would generally, rec generally recommend against that, Chomzy. This flop seems like more of a range bet EP versus big blind, but more of a polarized spot button versus big blind. I disagree with that, WXR, but that's a topic for another day.